Hello, in this video, we're going to solve a math problem. We're going to find the absolute extreme values of f of x equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 8 on the interval negative 1 comma 2. Let's go ahead and carefully work through its solution. The first thing you want to do in this problem is find all of the critical numbers of this function that are between negative 1 and 2. So we'll start by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. So f prime of x is equal to, so to find this derivative, it's pretty easy. We just use what's called the power rule. So basically you take the exponent, you bring it down, and then you subtract one from the exponent. So for x cubed, we'll have bringing the three down, we'll get three x, and then you subtract one from the exponent, so that gives you a two. Then here, bring down the two, so two times six is 12, so you have minus 12x to the first power because two minus one is one. The derivative of nine x is just nine. And then the derivative of eight is zero because eight is a constant. And we set this equal to zero. And we have to find x. It looks like we can pull out a three from all of this. So let's start by doing that. And maybe that will make the rest of the factoring a little bit easier. So f prime of x is equal to, pulling out the three, we have parentheses x squared minus, and let's see, three times what is negative 12, so minus four x. And then three times what is gonna give us nine, so positive three, yep, that looks okay. And all of this is equal to zero. All right, good stuff. So we have f prime of x is equal to three. Now here, what you can do is we should be able to factor, so let's try. Okay, and this is equal to zero. So we know there's going to be an x here and there's going to be an x here because x times x is x squared. So now we need two numbers that multiply to three but add to negative four. So one times three is three but they need to add to a negative four so we can make both of them negative and that should work. Great, so we have a product equal to zero so we can set each factor equal to zero. You don't have to worry about the three because you can just divide it away. So we get x minus one equals zero or x minus three equals zero. And solving each of these simple linear equations, we're gonna get two possible answers, x equals one and x equals three. Now these are the critical numbers of this function here, f of x. Recall that critical numbers are numbers that are in the domain of the function where the derivative is zero or undefined. However, in this particular problem, we're restricting the domain uh, to negative one comma two. We're looking for extreme values in this interval. So three is not going to be something we are going to consider because three uh, is not in this interval. All right, so now that we have uh, the critical numbers uh, that are in this interval, we can go to the next step in this problem, and that's basically to take the critical numbers, in this case it's just one, as well as the endpoints, which are negative one and two, and plug them back into the original function. The biggest number we get is going to be the absolute maximum of this function on this closed interval, and the smallest number we get is going to be the absolute minimum of this function on this closed interval. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down the function again down here so we can see it more clearly. So our original function was f of x equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 8. And the interval here was negative 1 comma 2. All right, so now we're going to check uh, all of these numbers. Let's start by checking the critical number. So plugging it into f of x, we have f of 1 is equal to, well, we'll just get one cubed minus six times one squared plus nine times one plus eight. This is equal to one minus six plus, then nine plus eight is 17. So all of this uh, is going to give us, looks like 12, negative five plus 17, right? This is a negative five plus 17 is, is 12, right? Negative five plus 17 is 12. So we get 12. Let's go ahead and check negative one now. That's our, our first endpoint, f of negative one. So we get negative one cubed 
minus 6 times negative 1 squared plus 9 times negative 1 plus 8. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 because negative 1 to an odd power is negative. So this is negative 1. Uh, negative 1 squared is 1, so we'll get negative 6 times 1, so negative 6. This is going to be a negative 9. And then we have a plus 8. So we have f of negative 1 is equal to, let's see here, so this is negative 7 minus 9, uh, which is uh, negative 16, plus 8. So we get negative 8. And then the last one we have to check is 2. So again, plugging 2 back into our original function here, f of 2 is equal to 2 cubed minus 6 times 2 quantity squared plus, or just 2 squared, I don't know why I said 2 quantity, uh, 9 times 2 plus 8. Just basically taking the 2 and putting it everywhere you see an x. Good stuff. So 2 cubed is 8 minus uh, 6 times 4, right? 2 squared is 4, so this is minus 24. And then 9 times 2 is 18, so plus 18, and then plus 8. So f of 2 is going to be equal to, let's see what's going on here. Um, let's see, 8 minus 24 is going to be negative 16, plus, and this is going to be uh, 26. So this is going to give us 10. So f of 2 is 10. So the biggest number we have here is 12. So this is going to be the absolute max. And it's the y value that's the maximum, okay? Uh, it occurs at x equals 1. Uh, a lot of times, if you're doing this for like, for like a class in school, you have like online homework, and they'll want the ordered pair, so it would be 1 comma 12. But this is where it occurs. So it occurs here, occurs, it's the key. Uh, don't get confused. This is not the maximum, right? The maximum is the y value. It's really important to understand that. And the smallest one is going to be negative 8. So this is going to be the absolute min. And again, if you were doing this for a class, they might, they might want to know where it occurs. It occurs at x equals negative 1. So it occurs basically at this ordered pair. So it occurs here. This is, this is the ordered pair where you have an absolute uh, min. Okay, so that would be the absolute minimum of this function. Recall that every continuous function on a closed interval has both an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. That's very, very key. It's called the extreme value theorem. And in our case here, we had a polynomial, which is a continuous function. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have uh, both an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. Hopefully you've learned some math in this video. And if you wanna learn more math, make sure to check out my courses. They're on the Udemy platform, um, but if you get them, use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com. I've got courses that cover all of this stuff with assignments and stuff, tons of calculus courses and other math courses. I hope it's been helpful to you. Hopefully you've learned some mathematics. Take care and good luck.